tale that seems straight out of a spy novel, so audacious, so horrific. It would have to be a work of fiction, but it's all too true. An ex-KGB agent mysteriously poisoned while having tea at a London hotel. Within days, he was dead. Well, it turns out that the plot to kill Alexander Litvin Litvinenko was likely approved at the Kremlin's highest level by none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin. That conclusion, according to a report released this morning by investigators in the UK, where Litvinenko was poisoned with polonium-210 in the year 2006. Let's get right to CNN's international diplomatic editor, Nick Robertson, who's live in London. Nick, what do investigators believe was the motive beyond the fact that he was an ex-KGB spy? Yeah, sure. One of the things, Jake, was that he was very critical of Putin. He moved to UK in the year 2000, uh, and he alleged uh, such things as the uh, big apartment bombings in Moscow in 1999 that allowed Putin to go to war in Chechnya were really a put-up job by the state. There was that. Uh, that was when he was talking about that. That was big, explosive news. We kind of know about it a little more now, but that was a big deal at the time. He was also helping the British intelligence services unravel the Russian criminal matter mafia that were operating um, clandestinely in the UK. So there, there was a number of reasons that, it, that uh, Putin might have a good, strong need, if you will, to, to silence him. And something also about alleging that Putin is a pedophile? There was some of that, too. Uh, his criticism of, of Putin was very strong. Um, and, you know, one of the witnesses in this report that came out, uh, an unnamed witness uh, who, spoke to, who spoke to one of the alleged killers, the alleged killer said, uh, we've been told not to shoot him, but poison him, poison Litvinenko, to send a strong message to the others. So this was a man who was not a friend to President Putin in any shape or form. So, but is there evidence linking this to Putin directly? There's no smoking gun. There's a lot of, uh, if you will, circumstantial evidence. There's a lot of things that the investigation points to. It says, look, the polonium-210, uh, uh, this radioactive poison that was used to kill uh, Litvinenko, it could have only been made in a nuclear reactor. The nuclear reactors in Russia are under the control of uh, uh, the Russian state. But for, that, for the poison to get out of the sort of atomic energy agency there and into the hands of the intelligence services would need to be done by somebody who was overarching and above both of those. Now, in the sort of back covering way that uh, the bureaucracy works in Russia, the assessment is that could have only been done by Putin. It is a track record of, of other critics uh, being apparently silenced by being killed. Uh, so th there's a lot of other details as well, but that's a principal one. And, and Nick, quickly, if you could, ha have the Russians responded to this? Sure. Uh, the, the foreign ministry is saying, look, this is politically motivated by the British government, that there were some secret details that weren't made public in this inquiry. That was because of the association with the British intelligence services by Litvinenko. Um, uh, but they're really pouring cold water on it. They're not about to hand over the alleged killers. The alleged killers themselves are saying this is not true. We're innocent. I guess we expected that. Nick Robertson, thanks so much. It was the shocking murder of a prominent Russian dissident seen here dying in his hospital bed and an act of nuclear terrorism, say British officials, in the heart of London, just yards from the U.S. Embassy. Now a British investigation has found that the two Russian secret agents accused of the murder, quote, probably acted with the approval of Russian President Vladimir Putin. The FSB operation to kill Mr. Litvinenko was probably approved by Mr. Petruchev, then head of the FSB, and also by President Putin. Alexander Litvinenko, who fled Russia for the UK to seek asylum, was an outspoken critic of the Kremlin, accusing President Putin of orchestrating the deadly bombings of Russian apartment buildings in 1999 to justify a second Russian invasion of Chechnya. Another potential motive, the report cites an article Litvinenko published that accuses Putin of sexual involvement with underage boys and that Russian intelligence had video evidence. Litvinenko blamed Putin for ordering his poisoning and authorized this statement from his deathbed. You may succeed in silencing one man, but the howl of protest from around the world will reverberate, Mr. Putin, in your ears for the rest of your life. Today, Litvinenko's widow, Marina, welcomed the British findings. I'm, of course, very pleased that the words my husband spoke 
on his deathbed when he accused Mr. Putin of his murder have been proved. The details of the case seem stolen from a spy novel. Surveillance video shows the Russian agents at the London Hotel where they allegedly injected a powerful dose of the highly radioactive element polonium-210 into Litvinenko's tea during a meeting there. Litvinenko died a slow, painful death, and the radioactive polonium contaminated dozens of other people who had direct or indirect contact with him. This was a blatant and unacceptable breach of the most fundamental tenets of international law and of civilized behavior. Today, one of the accused killers, Andrei Ligovoy, now a Russian politician, vehemently denied the accusation. An outrageous lie, and I can't find any other word to describe it. Russian officials dismissed the findings as politicized. This gross provocation of the British authorities cannot help hurting our bilateral relations.